Welcome to Tech Notice. Some very interesting news. Cinebench just released their Cinebench 2024. And yes, that's right, now Cinebench also supports GPUs. But there's a lot to uncover and what's going on, but I think it's gonna be interesting, especially you if you wanna test the Redshift performance out on your CPU and GPU and Cinebench 2024. Well, there's some interesting uh, things available and it's available right now, so you can check it out, but let's talk a little bit more in depth. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So firstly, if you want to go check it out, um, it's available. I'll leave the link in the description below where you can literally just go and download it for Windows, ARM or Mac OS as well. It's available, it's free. You can check it out and start testing your hardware to see how it comp compares or whatever. You can look at some uh, other in interesting things there, but the very interesting powerful features are that finally now, after over a decade, Cinebench also supports a GPU accelerated renderer Redshift there. Cinema 4D, as you can see, and now Redshift renderer there as well. So GPUs can be utilized and you can actually test it on Cinebench. So once you've downloaded it, it looks like that. And then you just run the application and let's have a look. There we go. We've got Cinebench 24, tests the performance of your system using industry leading 3D technology from Maxon, including Cinema 4D and Redshift. So it can be CPU and GPU now. And as you can see on the top there, we've got a GPU benchmark. So let's talk about what's going on here and what can you do. So first of all, if you go to file, you can uh, tick this box here that says advanced benchmark and that will show you whether you want to run this benchmark for a single time or for 10 minutes for some of the like throttling performance uh, you know ways or 30 minutes if you just want to see stability like how well does this gpu for example keep rendering for 30 minutes how stable is the performance compared to the first and the last test, for example, or the average, what's the performance there? Because obviously things heat up and that's why you want to see the stability. If after, once they've heated up, how well do they perform there? And, uh, you know, is it still as good as the first run, which was, you know, cold run, basically. You can also tick something like this, run all tests. And once you click that, basically it starts doing it straight away. I will show you. And it starts doing a GPU first, right? So with one click, you can just get your GPU, CPU, multi-core and single core run back to back. So the system just does it by itself. Previously, you had to like click multi-core and single core separately. But now if you just click start, you can actually get this to render in one click. And as you can see, my GPU is almost done. This is the Asus TUF. RTX 4070, which I had installed 12 gigabytes of VRAM and we got 14,399 points. And now it's going to do the CPU multi-core test, which I have the Intel Core i9 10900K. So it's a little bit older one, 10 cores, 20 threads, all performance cores. And as you can see, it performs somewhere around there. I did this test previously and I got 811 points. You can see some of the rankings in here that they have already done. You can see some of the CPU scores for for example, Apple M1 Ultra is going to score multi-score of 1625, which means that the test scores, they have massively pulled down. You're not going to get as many points as previously, like Cinebench R23, uh, you were able to get like 37 to 40,000 points and 3900K, for example, and about 27,000 points with the M1 Ultra, but now only 1625, which is basically like what the single core tests were for a lot of the, you know, uh, CPUs. But this is a multi-core performance, so we can go to GPU as well. You can... Okay, because it's doing CPU. It's gonna get a lower score right now because I've got the OBS running in the background and so on, but basically you'll get the point. The GPU is gonna be so much faster than your CPU, which is the whole point of like showcasing this is, okay, is it better or faster to run on GPU or CPU? Sometimes obviously it you might need one than the other, 
But here in my case, you can see the CPU is 10, 20, more than 20 times slower than the GPU with a 4070. And that's not even the best GPU there. I'm going to stop this right now. When I stop this one, it's going to jump to single core. I'll have to stop this one as well. Here we can go and see some of these rankings, what they have done. So if you don't have any other systems on hand, you can see what are some of the comparable online, what, what are happening over there. So right now I scored 14,000 points, but because I had OBS running over there, it took some of the scores away, but previously I did 16,000 points in there. There's Radeon W6800, uh, that's the workstation GPU performance there. 27 Super is here. M1 Ultra Metal Score is there. So as you can see, the M1 Ultra, which is ridiculous, and you know, GPU, uh, 6,000 points is still a lot cheaper. Uh, I mean, a lot slower than that. We have Radeon Vega Metal 5500M, and then with M1 Metal there for 1,260 points. So this is very interesting, but what you need to know is some of the minimum hardware requirements for this, because it's a kind of um has some limitations even though um you know this is pretty awesome way of testing this there so risk system risk requirements first of all it works in windows 10 windows 11 mac os as well whether you're running intel or apple's own silicon um it works on both of them so looking at the minimum system right requirements for windows we need 16 gigabytes of ram it does support Intel or AMD CPUs with AVX2 support on Windows 11 on Snapdragon Compute Platform or ARM as well. So it supports quite a few different CPU, even architectures, Intel, AMD, Snapdragon. So that's like all oh, well, mobile as well. Interesting. And some of the tablets potentially even. NVIDIA GPU with CUDA compute capability or higher. So basically it does use CUDA rather than the RT cores, for example, for some of this compute. And it needs eight gigabytes of VRAM or AMD Navi or Vega GPUs, which support HIP and also eight gigabytes of dedicated VRAM or more. So now if you have a GPU that has less than eight gigabytes, for example, some of the 1060s, I think it was six gigabytes or others, then it's not going to work. You need eight gigabytes or more as the minimum requirement, which is quite a high spec, actually. So for Mac OS, if you're running uh, some of the older systems with Intel CPU, right? You need 16 gigabytes of RAM and you need the 16, 64 bit processor, which is, you know, standard there. All of these will work pretty much. And then you need AMD Navi or Vega GPU or later with eight gigabytes of VRAM. They've got the, the GPUs support, uh, you know, lower there as well, which are supported. But for Apple Silicon, if you want to test that and you want to have the GPU test, then the interesting thing is you need 16 gigabytes of un unified memory just because some of this will go on the CPU and GPU. And when you're doing this test, it might need both of them. So it, it says that CPU rendering works on Apple Silicon machines with eight gigabytes or 12 gigabytes of memory too, but the OS memory paging can degrade the performance compared to the machines with 16 gigs of memory. So basically you can run it, but the you basically bottlenecked by RAM in order to test your CPU or GPU performance in very simple terms. The Apple M ser series, all of these will work. M1, M1 Pro, Max Ultra, M2 Pro, Max and Ultra, they're all supported. So AMD GPUs for Windows, as you can see this uh, Radeon Pro, 79 and 7800 GPUs, as well as W6000 series. There is the Vega 7 as well. I think it's a Radeon Vega 7, Radeon 7, and then W5700 as well as well as some of the like more mainstream not like workstation grade gpus they're all supported there as well most of them they're saying these gpus also uh, are supported but are not actively tested so basically they're showing that these might have some interesting quirks but they are supported there's some of the gpus for macbook pro and imax and stuff that are working as well but also interestingly you can test this with a thunderbolt eGPU. so if you've got a mac for example or something like that and you want to put an eGPU in there then these are supported as well if you want to test that it's a slightly 
all the feature now but still the rx 6900 xd which is one of the latest and greatest um, you know gpus is supported in there so just interesting i'd say so feel free to test it out in the description below and if you are a creator and you want to build yourself the best bank for what creator pc that uh, supports very high scores in cinebench then check out the build guides in the description below Yes, I know you can see the arc in the background over there and the video is coming out very, very soon. Unfortunately, it looks like Intel Arc is not supported on Cinebench, um, but hopefully soon. Bye bye.